Welcome back to the Everlasting Rock podcast. My name is Daniel, and thanks again for joining me for episode two of the Everlasting Rock podcast. If you joined us uh, with us last episode, we talked about this idea of being built on the rock, building your life on the rock. And so we, we talked a little bit foundationally of, of what our podcast exists to do and and what we're going to really talk about on this podcast. And so last time we spent uh, a little bit of time in Isaiah and then in the book of Matthew. Um, but today we're going to take a, a different turn. We're going to go into uh, the book of Psalms. In the next couple of episodes, we're going to talk about Psalm 1 and Psalm 2. Because I think they have a lot of, of really good truth that we're going to we're going to talk a lot about in this podcast. And so I want to go to Psalm chapter one in this episode. And we're going to talk about the path of the righteous and the wicked. We're going to, we're going to sketch out what the path of the wicked looks like. And then we're going to talk about what does the path of the righteous look like. And I think this will help, uh, lay a foundation for what does it look like to to build your life on the rock what does it what does it mean to to walk on the rock and so we're going to we're going to d- dive into psalm chapter 1 in this episode so if you have a bible with you turn to psalm 1 so it says this how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by, sh- by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in, and in whatever he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not rise in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Thus says the word of the Lord. So that was Psalm chapter 1. And we're going we're gonna to go into each verse and, and, and talk about the truth that it gives us. And so beginning in verse 1, it says this. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. So there is a a blessing in not being in fellowship with the wicked. Now, what do we define as the wicked? Because all of us are wicked. All of us are wicked dead in sin, apart from Christ. So all of us were once in the category of the wicked. But if we know Christ, if we've believed in Christ, if we've submitted our life to Christ, we are seeking to walk in the path that he laid out for us. We're going to seek to glorify God with our life. We're going to seek to avoid the thoughts and and the patterns and and the conduct of this world. And so there is a blessing when you know the Lord that you don't fellowship constantly with the wicked. Those who will pull you away from following Christ, who will slow up, your walk as you pursue the Lord. And so it says there is a a blessing. It says, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So are you getting counsel from those who are loving the world, pursuing the world, seeking to win praise from the world? Or are you walking in the counsel of the righteous? And then it goes on to say, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. And so are you you walking and are you committing your life consistently with those who are 
seeking to honor the Lord. They're seeking to walk in a righteous path instead of being consumed with those who are just walking by the world's ways. And so, as I, as I think about this verse and, and this idea of, of, of being in, in fellowship with the wicked, I think of a verse in James chapter 4. In James chapter 4, it says this, You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world sets himself as an enemy of God. That was James chapter 4, verse 4. And I think that verse really lays out what Psalm 1, verse 1 is, is sort of talking about, is this idea of, are you being a friend of the world? Because that's what the wicked will do. They're going to be a friend of the world. They're going to pursue the world. They're going to love the world. They're going to love the things in the world. And as a result, the wicked are in hostility toward God. They are an enemy of God, as James chapter 4, verse 4 says. So, are you seeking to love the world? Are you seeking to pursue the world, to follow the world, or are you seeking to follow Christ? Are you going to avoid those who are walking the path of the world, and are you going to go, go follow Christ? I think that's what Psalm 1 says lays out for us. There's a, there's a blessing in walking with the righteous and following the Lord. And then going now into verse 2, it says this, But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law he meditates day and night. And verse 2 um, shows us, this verse shows us really of what the righteous are going to do. They're not going to walk in the path of the wicked. Instead, they're going to pursue the lighting in the law of Yahweh. The righteous seek fellowship with Yahweh, not the world. They delight in God's word and are in his word meditating, meditating on it day and night. So is your delight in scripture alone or is it in the world alone? What does our time in his law look like? Is our time of meditation in his word short, sweet, and simple? Or are we spending concentrated moments of our life, patterns of our week, focused in his word, reading his word, soaking it in? That's my question. Are we... Are we meditating in his word? Because it is a delight. And my prayer for you would be that you would be meditating in his law, in his glorious law that he has laid out to us. So let's go, let's go meditate in his word. Let's go immerse ourselves in his word because when we immerse ourselves in his word, verse 3 mentions, What's going to happen? It says this, and he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. So that is what happens when we meditate in the law of Yahweh day and night. Verse 3 says you're going to be like a tree. You're going to be firmly planted by streams of, of water, which yields its fruit in season. When you study the word, when you immerse yourselves in the word of God, there will be fruit. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to begin to start taking things away. You're going to start understanding who the Lord is. You're going to start wanting to obey his commands. When you immerse yourselves in the word, you're able to begin to know who God is through the Holy Spirit's help. And if, if you're not immersing yourselves in the word, it's going to be hard to plant yourself in the Lord if you're not meditating on his word. So there is this beauty of, of, of meditating because 
when you meditate, there will be glorious fruit. But then also, when hardships come, the leaf will not wither. When hardships come in this life, if you're immersed in the Word of God, the leaf's not going to die. The plant's not going to give up because God is working. God has established you in the faith and his establishing is not going to vanish. And as you're immersed in his word, you're not going to you're not going to shift. You're not going to to fade, you're not going to fall away when the Lord knows you truly. And so that is the the beauty is, is when you know the the Lord and his word, hardships aren't going to shake you. You're going to have stability. There is such a blessing in following his commands and knowing who he is because when those hardships come, you're not going to be shaken. You're going to be able to see every blessing in every circumstance because you know the Lord, you begin to rejoice in his glorious sovereign plan and you're just going to be so immersed in his word, pursuing him that the hardships are not going to cause you to, to drift away from you're not going to be moved. You're not going to wither. However, the, the wicked are a different story. Those who are not immersed in the word of God, who are loving the world, the things of this world, it's going to be a different story. And, and verse four says this, the wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Scripture says that the wicked are like chaff, the, the useless part of the wheat is is the chaff and it is just blown away by the wind there's nothing to it soon as the soon as the wind comes the chaff is just gone and so that's what's going to happen with the wicked is they're not going to stand they're not going to stand during hardships they're not going to stand when trials and and everything come because they're just they're just chaff they're just going to blow away so we see what happens with the wicked. They're going to they're gonna blow away. They're completely opposite to what the righteous are doing. The righteous are being immersed in the word of God. They're loving the Lord. They're getting to know the Lord through reading his word. But the wicked are an entirely different story. They're just being blown away by everything in this world and by everything this world has to offer. Then verse 5 says this, Therefore, the wicked will not rise in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So the wicked are not going to survive in judgment. They will not be able to stand in, in judgment because condemnation will come upon them. And even if they have the appearance of, of being righteous, of, of walking the walk, of talking the talk, but having no love for the Lord, no immersion in his word, they're not even going to appear to be. The, the wicked are, are going to be clearly seen that they are the wicked. They may try to, to, to masquerade it as being with the righteous, but they're going to they're gonna perish. And so that is the the fearful dread of, of the wicked is, is that they're not going to stand on the day of judgment. They're not going to thrive. They're not going to be blessed. Instead, they will be experiencing God's wrath. And so we, we see the, the stark difference that, that those who know the Lord who are immersed in his word, who have fully trusted in Christ for their salvation and they're relying not on their own efforts, but fully in Christ, there's gonna be they're gonna be a they're gonna be blessed. They're going to to love his word. They're gonna be like a tree. They're gonna yield its fruit in season. They're not gonna weather during hardships. They're gonna prosper. And then verse six says this for Yahweh knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked 
equal pair. So here is the, the comforting word, is that Yahweh knows the righteous. He knows the way of the righteous. He knows who are his. And so there is a, this is a comfort in knowing that the Lord is, is watching you. The times that you have pursued the Lord, trusted in the Lord, even when, when no one's been looking, no one's been watching, the Lord, the Lord knows those who are his. And if you have submitted your life to Christ, fully and you have repented of your sins and, and trusted in him fully there is this blessing that the lord knows the righteous but those who are left following the world those who have committed themselves to to pursuing the things of this world it says the way the wicked will will perish they're going to experience judgment they're going to experience condemnation they're going to perish but Yahweh knows who are his and so my question to you would be have you submitted your life to Christ have you left the world with its entanglements and treasures and, and trinkets that it gives us and have you forsaken all those things have you have you turned from your sin have you recognized that you cannot save yourself you are dead in sin apart from Christ and so my hope and and prayer for you is that you would trust in Christ that you would submit your life under his lordship that you would follow him with with everything that you have that you trust him in, in every facet of your life. Because when you know the Lord, there is, a, there is a great blessing. There will be days of hardship and there will be days of, of great joy. But through it all, we can take heart because we know the Lord. We've trusted in the Lord. We need not fear death or hardships that will come because we, we know the Lord. And also my, my hope and prayer is that once you've trusted and fully submitted your life to Christ, are you immersing yourself in the law of Yahweh? Go immerse yourself in Scripture. Go love Scripture. Because in Scripture, we get to know who the Lord is. And so we get this sweet blessing of, of getting to know who the Lord is. And so I pray that you would begin to delight in the law of Yahweh, that you would continue to go back and back and back and back to it every single day. And there may be points when scripture may be a little dry where it doesn't feel like a delight. But the more and more and the more and the more that you get back into it, the more you immerse yourself in it, you're going you're gonna to love it because you seek to love the God of scripture. So, immerse yourself in scripture, leave the world with all of its desires, all of its passions, all of its trinkets, leave the world behind. Delight in the law of Yahweh, meditate on it day and night, be committed to scripture, because when you're committed to scripture, you're going to be firmly planted, you're going to yield fruit in season, there's going to be great blessings from from knowing the Lord, not material blessings, not that you're going to be wealthy and wise and all these other things, which you're going to have, you're going to have some wisdom from scripture uh, that the Holy Spirit gives you. Uh, but, but realize that there is this blessing in, in following the Lord. And unfortunately, there are many people that have taken that in all the wrong ways, but there is this idea of, uh, of a blessing in, in, in following the Lord. And so when you know the Lord, you're not going to be like, you're not going to be like the wicked that are just blown away by everything because the wicked are not going to rise in judgment. They're not going to stand with the righteous. They're going to be separated. They're going to perish, but the Lord knows the way of the righteous. So trust in Christ, submit to his word, love the Lord with everything that you have, 
Go hard after him. Be saturated in the word of God. And let's go pursue Christ. By his spirit, by his strength, for his glory. Let's go walk the righteous path. Let's go build our life on the rock. Let's go love him all of our day. Thank you for listening to the Everlasting Rock podcast. For more podcast episodes and more resources, head over to everlastingrock.net. That's everlastingrock.net.